the first three days of July of 1863, the Union Army of the Potomac, led by General George Gordon Meade, and the Confederate Army of Virginia, led by General Robert E. Lee, fought the Battle of Gettysburg. It was a decisive victory for the Union. Lee retreated, but his army could not immediately cross the Potomac due to swelling waters. They stayed near Williamsport, Maryland, for almost nine days until the evening of July 13th and 14th, when they passed over the Potomac on into Virginia. Lincoln was greatly displeased that Meade had allowed Lee to escape back into Virginia. He believed that had Meade attacked Lee at Williamsport, the war could have ended. On July 7th, Lincoln had written General Halleck that we have certain information that Vicksburg surrendered to General Grant on the 4th of July. Now, if General Meade can complete his work so gloriously prosecuted thus far, by the literal or substantial destruction of Lee's army, the rebellion will be over. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Halleck conveyed to Meade Lincoln's displeasure with him. Meade offered to resign. Lincoln wrote this letter on July 14th to attempt to soothe Meade's feelings but he got right to the point in his criticism. He says the following, I've just seen your dispatch to General Halleck, asking to be relieved of your command because of a supposed censure of mine. I am very, very grateful to you for the magnificent success you gave the cause of the country at Gettysburg, and I'm sorry now to be the author of the slightest pain to you, but I was in such deep distress myself that I could not restrain some expression of it. Lincoln continues to spell out the source of his distress. He says, I had been oppressed nearly ever since the battles at Gettysburg by what appeared to be evidences that yourself and General Couch and General Smith were not seeking a collision with the enemy, but were trying to get him across the river without another battle. What these evidences were, if you please, I hope to tell you at some time, when we shall both feel better. General Darius Couch was head of the Department of the Susquehanna, assigned to protect Harrisburg, Pennsylvania from attack in July of 1863. General William Farrar Smith engaged with Confederate troops led by General Jeff Stewart on July 1st in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Both generals were involved in the chase of Lee after Gettysburg. In Lincoln's opinion, they also shared some of the blame for Lee's escape. Later in the letter, Lincoln also criticizes both generals for not getting to Gettysburg sooner. Then, just as if he were arguing a case in court, Lincoln lays out why he believes that Meade had failed. He says, the case summarily stated is this, you fought and beat the enemy at Gettysburg, and of course, to say the least, his loss was as great as yours. He retreated, and you did not, as it seemed to me, pressingly pursue him, but a flood in the river detained him, till by slow degrees you were again upon him. You had at least 20,000 veteran troops directly with you, and as many more raw ones within supporting distance, all in addition to those who fought with you at Gettysburg. While it was not possible that he had received a single recruit, and yet you stood and let the flood run down, bridges be built, and the enemy move away at his leisure without attacking him. To be fair, Meade was there in Pennsylvania and then Maryland with his troops after Gettysburg. He knew the condition of the army after the hard-fought battle. Lincoln was not there. And, maybe, the errors of past generals in failing to make the most of an opportunity to crush the enemy compounded Lincoln's disappointment in Meade. Then, as if to make absolutely sure that he has gotten his point across, Lincoln points out what he believes to be the dire consequences of Meade's failure to close in on Lee before Lee escaped into Virginia. He says, again, my dear General, I do not believe you appreciate the magnitude of the misfortune involved in Lee's escape. He was within your easy grasp, and to have closed upon him would, in connection with our other late successes, have ended the war. As it is, the war will be prolonged indefinitely. If you could not safely attack Lee last Monday, how can you possibly do so south of the river, when you can take with you very few more than two-thirds of the force you then had in hand? It would be unreasonable to expect and I do not expect you can now effect much. Of course, we know that Lincoln did not send this letter at this time, and he did not replace Meade. He believed he had no able replacement, and he badly needed to focus on the victory of Gettysburg to keep public morale up. Removing Meade would only tarnish that victory. He defended Meade to his cabinet, 
and told them that Meade had committed a terrible mistake, but we will try him further. And he wrote the following letter to General Howard days later, which shows his willingness, perhaps upon reflection, to put his disappointment in perspective. He says in this letter, I was deeply mortified by the escape of Lee across the Potomac because the substantial destruction of his army would have ended the war, and because I believed such destruction was perfectly easy. Believed that General Meade and his noble army had expended all his skill and toil and blood up to the ripe harvest and then let the crop go to waste. Perhaps my mortification was heightened because I'd always believed, making my belief a hobby possibly, that the main rebel army going north of the Potomac could never return, if well attended to, and because I was so greatly flattered in this belief by the operations at Gettysburg. A few days having passed, I am now profoundly grateful for what was done, without criticism for what was not done. General Meade has my confidence as a brave and skillful officer and a true man. Our chieftain so brave and so true We'll go for the great reformation For Lincoln and liberty too We'll go for the son of Kentucky The hero of Hoosier and through The pride of the sucker so lucky For Lincoln and liberty